Hi there. Before we get to today's project, I got some new stickers, logos, whatever you want to call them, emailed to me this week. One was from Stephen McElligot of the Ottawa Valley Wood Turners. So he sent me his logo and I'm going to put a link down below the video in the description box so you can check out their website. They've got some great turners, some beautiful work in their gallery. I suggest you take a look. I also got a logo sent to me by Colin Lawton for his YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below so you can check him out. He's one of the guys who has put together a turn for the good on Facebook. And I'll put a link to that as well. Also this week, I got something special. I got a real sticker. Stuart Farini sent this to me. So I can put that up on my wall now. I've scanned it. Thank you, Stuart. Kind of a kick getting a real sticker again. So now, let's get on with it and get to today's project. And this is the project I'm going to demonstrate for you today. I had fun doing this. I don't know where this shape came up from. Just something that was tickling the back of my brain. And I wanted to see if I could actually create it. Now my wife told me I should call it spheres of influence, but since a sphere is really a ball and these are just the little bowls, that's not going to work. I don't know what to call this. I had fun with, with the beading. I even had fun with some of the offset turning, although it was a real challenge. It was so off balance that even at 500 RPM, my lathe was trying to walk across the floor. So I had to come up with a way of getting around that. And I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Got a little bit of a foot on the bottom, so it looks almost like it's floating there. And I'm quite pleased with it. So if you're interested in seeing how I came up with this, please stick around. Now let's go take a look at it. This is the slab of maple that today's project is going to come from. It's a little over three feet long, nine inches wide, and I only need eight inches across this way and nine and a half inches long. So that will let me avoid this knot. So let me get to work and get today's project going. Well, if you've watched my videos before, this won't come as a surprise to you. I've changed my mind. If you haven't watched before, I do that quite often. I said I was going to cut this eight inches wide and nine and a half inches long. But after thinking about it, I realized that would just mean having more air to cut, as you'll see when I get going here. So I've decided I'm gonna keep this whole width and I'm gonna cut it 10 inches long, which is pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to take this over the table saw now. Often I would just put this on the miter saw, it's much quicker. But just to show that there's more than one way to do things, I like to often use a different tool. Today, I'm going to use the table saw for this. So I'll go over and cut this now. I have taken and made some marks. One is exactly in the center of this block, and then the other two are each three inches over from it along the center line. They are going to each have a two inch hole drilled, well, not a hole really, but a recess to accommodate the two inch jaws on my chuck. And from this one and from this one, I took my compass and I drew an arc eight inches from here. The reason being, my lathe has a 16 inch swing, which means eight inches from the center of the spindle is as far as I can cut, or pardon me, I can use the lathe. So after I get these drilled, I'm gonna to have to take it to the bandsaw and cut on these arcs so that it will swing. So I'm gonna go take these over and drill those recesses and then it'll be time to go to the lake.
After I finished cutting this on the bandsaw, these edges weren't very smooth. The bandsaw doesn't do a really good job. So I took this over to my disc sander, did a few passes on here just to clean it up, make it nice and smooth. Now my next step is to put one of these outer recesses on my chuck, tighten this on there, and just see if it's going to actually swing or not. Should be holding it tightly enough. And it does just fine. The other end should be the same, but I will double check it just to be sure. And that's good to go. So now I'm going to put it on the center hole and start doing some designing on this. Now stand out of the way, 500 RPM, and it's going just fine. My intention is still to have this nine and a half inches long with the grain. Well, it's at nine and three quarters, I'll just go with that. So I want to make a mark roughly a quarter of an inch in from this outside edge. Carry it around. And from there, I want to hollow this out just very little, just make it a little bit concave. I'm going to be using my 3 8 inch bowl gouge. This appears to be running very true, so I'm going to be turning at 1000 RPM. I'm going to start from the center with a pull cut, just very gently. Use a push cut just to a little bit in toward the center here. And that is probably about three sixteenths of an inch deep at the center. I'm going to just stay with that. Now I'm just going to use the lead of my pencil, and I just want to shade this entire surface. Now the reason I've shaded this is because I'm going to be using my beading tool. And as I rock it side to side, once the graphite disappears, I will know that I am down to the round part of the beading tool, precisely. And then I will go over and use the left side on the right side of the mark that's already been made, and just do each one all the way across. Now, one thing I have not done, as you can see, is put a handle on this. I'm going to be making very gentle cuts, so I shouldn't need one. And then again, this might be under the heading of famous last words. So I'm going to do very gentle cuts, 1000 RPM. Let's see how this works out. All right, 
you can just see how it's just coming up to where it's going to start taking off the graphite from the pencil. And there it is, now it's round. So I'm going to fit this side right on the edge there and do the next one. Oh yes, looking good. And I'll just carry on and do the rest of this. There is some roughness where it crosses the grain. I'm going to take some 400 grit sandpaper. Might have to go a little coarser than that and just very gently run it in the grooves and across the top and see if I can clean that up a little better. I have the dust hood just over here to take the dust away and I'm going to be turning this in reverse just to make sure that the dust does go in that direction. Be turning at 500 RPM. I'll just get my air shield on and start sanding this. Where I've sanded it does look pretty good. There's a bit of an improvement. Unfortunately, I also think it's going to take me about three weeks to sand all of this. So I'm going to drop back to 240 grit, a bit coarser, and very gently do all of them. I don't want to lose the roundness of these. And then I will go up to 400 grit and finish them off. See how this is going to turn out. That is making quite a difference. Quite happy with that. So I'm going to carry on and I'll be back after I've got all this sanded. I found that sanding across the face flattened some of the beads a bit, so now I have to go into the grooves and round them over a little bit. So 
They're cleaning up much nicer than they were. Long way to go yet. I knew when I put these holes off center that this was going to be a little off balance. But this is turned to 250 RPM and just check this out. The camera is steady. Not quite sure exactly how I'm supposed to turn anything on this with the way it is moving. Just getting the pencil in there to mark the center was interesting. Not exactly sure how I'm supposed to put a gouge or the beading tool or anything else in there with that kind of motion. I managed to balance this out fairly well with two different steps. First I added this counterbalance that you see on the left side of the screen. The longer piece of wood was added and then the shorter one. It was still too heavy at that point so I slowly took off the thickness from the shorter piece a sixteenth of an inch at a time until it was very close to balanced and then I dropped that down to taking off one thirty-second of an inch until it was balanced so it would sit like this and not turn. At that point it was still shaking fairly badly and I realized it was because my cabinet is on casters. So I managed to raise it up and put it onto a grid of two by sixes to get the casters off the floor and that itself made a huge difference. Now if you look at the tool rest against the telepost in the background on the left you can see that it is running very smoothly compared to how it was. What I would like to do with this is use my beading tool and turn beads across the existing beads. But I'm fairly certain that trying to do that is simply going to chip away the beads that are there. If that does happen, I'm simply going to make small bowls in this area and of course on the other side as well. I'm going to be turning this at 900 RPM. I tried it at 650 and it was still shaking pretty badly, but as I increased the speed, it went through that vibration and smoothed out very significantly. And just as I thought, it's simply chipping that out very badly. So I'm just going to make a small bowl in this area. But before I make a bowl, there's something else I want to do with this surface. I want to take sanding sealer and seal all of this. And then I want to paint it. I've got a small sprayer called a Preval sprayer. I haven't tried this yet. I'm going to do a test on some cardboard or paper to see just how it works. But the idea is to mix paint up in this small container, put it on here, and then this has, I don't know if it's compressed air or what it is for charging, and you can simply spray with it. So I'll do a test and I'll be back to show you how this works. I'm going to use my usual sanding sealer, Zinsser Seal Coat mixed 50-50 with methyl hydrate. I'll just do a wash on here. 
Make sure it goes down into the grooves using this shop towel. Give it some time to dry and then I'm going to hand sand it with 600 grit. This will take a while. I have mixed 50-50 cerulean blue and water and I've done a quick test. Turned out all right, I thought. I just want to do very light coats. Took a while to get it flowing, but it's not too bad there. I'm going to be turning this at 900 RPM. I'm going to be using my 3 8 inch bowl gouge and I'll start with the flute closed which means it's straight up and down across that. If I open it up and try going in there it could easily skate across here and ruin these beads. So I'll establish a bit of a point there and then I can open it up. Once I have that as point established I will actually start working from the inside out. All right, 900 RPM. Not too bad quite like that. I'm just going to sand this and I'm going to move this counterweight to the other side and do the same thing on the other side of this piece. Check for depth. Oh man, I think that's right on. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's got it right there. Just need to sand this now. I don't think I really like this. 
I think I want the center one to be just a little larger than the other two. I'm gonna take this back another ring and a half I believe. Yes, I like that better. I'm just going to sand this now. Well, this is what I've got so far. I've still got that straight edge on there. So now I'm going to take it over to the table saw and I'm going to bring both of these sides in a little bit. Let's go over there and take a quick look. Now I want to cut this off to exactly the same spot on the same ring. So I've marked that right there. And I need to cut it to eight inches. That's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Well, I'm pleased with this so far. Now I want to put it back on the lathe. I want these two ends to be round right at the edge of that ring. Also, I want to take away some of this blue staining. So that's my next step. I'm going to put it back on there and turn this a little bit more. I'm going to be turning a lot of air here. So we'll have to see what I have to do for speed should be high. 3 8 inch bowl gouge, starting with the flute closed again, 2000 RPM. Hey, I think I might just put that back on the table saw, take a hair off of each side, just enough to get rid of that. I'm using the cone on my live center. Put it into the center here to make sure that I have this centered across my coal jaws. Now I've only got two of these buttons on each of two sides holding this. So I'm going to leave this in here for a little while. It's not really touching, but it's there for a little bit of safety. I'm going to be turning at 750 RPM. I don't want to go too far beyond what these coal jaws are rated at. difficult to get a clean cut when you're turning this slowly and getting this much air time. So I'm going to boost this up to 1000 RPM and just see how this will work. Well, the cuts are much cleaner in this area, but when I get out here where I'm cutting air, I've got some chipping again too. Just have to keep working on this. I do not recommend that you do this, but I am going to turn this up to 1500 RPM, which is way beyond what these cold jaws are rated for. And I'm just going to work from here out at that speed, and while I still have this in here for a little security. I don't believe this can possibly pull out of here with this in the way. So I'm going to see if I can do something at 1500 RPM. Okay. 
This is definitely tearing it because I'm pulling it out. So I'm going to try going in with a push cut. See if I can correct that a little bit. All right, I'm getting now right to where those screw holes are. I'll have to take those out. I think I'm going to sharpen my gouge. I'm getting a little bit of tear out, even trying this way. Well, I have come about as far as I can. I'm just maybe a sixteenth of an inch away from these buttons. So I'm going to come in here now with my scraper, which I don't use very often, but I will use here, and just try to tune this up just a little bit, and then it'll be sand the rest. I've still got screw hole evidence there and there, so this has to come down more, but I can't get any thinner here. And I'm actually starting to touch the buttons. So that's the best I can do there. Now I've just got to try to bring this down more and flare it around. And take it down here as well. I actually was hitting the bolt that's holding this button. And it's just taken the paint off basically. Just possibly a little bit of the steel. The carbide's pretty good stuff. My gouge is not sliding on there very well. Time to wax this tool rest again. All right, I've waxed the tool rest and the shaft of my gouge. Let's see if this works a little better.
It's amazing what a huge difference a little thing like wax can make. That was much nicer. And I'm going to try a little bit more with my spindle gouge. Nope, I'm going to fill that. It's just starting to look like it's going a long ways. I have some maple sawdust, actually sanding dust if you like, because I collect it once in a while when I'm sanding, so I can use it for purposes like this. I'm just going to pack some sawdust into that hole, and then I'm going to use some thin CA glue. Pour it in there, and just let it sit for a few minutes. I believe this glue has had long enough to cure. I'm just going to see if I can clean that up a little bit. Oh yeah, that's much better. A little sanding will take care of that. Now I'm going to turn this down to a thousand RPM. And I'm going to get this out of the way. And see if I can turn that foot down a little bit. As I'm sure you know, 1000 RPM is even too fast for these jaws, so don't follow my example if you're worried about it at all. And this turning has just turned up another area, much like the other one needs to be filled. So I'm just going to take a little bit more off of here, then I'm going to fill that, and then tune up this foot a little bit. That'll be short enough. Just finished making this a little bit concave, and then I'll fill that and I'll be back. All right, I'm going to sand this now off camera. I'm going to remove it from the coal jaws and then sand this by hand. This is going to take a little while. First I'm going to put some rings in here for decoration, drill my recess for my logo coin, which I've done many times, Then I'll sand this and I'll be back. I'm going to give this a few light coats of this Verithane clear finish. It's a gloss. I don't usually like gloss, but if this turns out to be too shiny for my liking, I can always put some satin over top of it. I will go with quite a number of very thin coats. I don't want it sagging and running. And I'll be back after this is finished. Well, I hope you liked that. Maybe it gave you an idea for one or two things. Trying to get that counterweight working and fine tune just right was a real challenge, but I enjoy doing it just pretty much like anything I get a challenge on. The Verithane spray that I use left a bit of a pebbled finish, which I really liked on the beads, but I wasn't crazy about it in these little bowls. So I sanded those out to 600 grit, and then I used wipe-on poly on that and everything else on here. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you'll come back next time. In the meantime, have a great day in your shop. Please be safe. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with your friends if you like. Thanks again, and take care now.